What is the overall state of the Bearcats program as we head into Saturday spring game? Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's the middle of the week. It's Wednesday. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. We are free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, including right here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to our Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel and follow it to get an alert every time that we drop a new episode. Today's episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today. To get started, it is Wednesday, which means it is Williams Wednesday here on Lockdown Bearcats. We are joined today by one of my former colleagues at iHeart Media Cincinnati, someone I'm still proud to call a friend to this day. You can hear him on 700 WLW occasionally, whether he's filling in for Rocky Boyman, hosting with Rocky Boyman, or on Saturday nights, late nights, nine to midnight. But most notably, you know him as the sports columnist at the Cincinnati Enquirer and I am pleased to welcome my good friend Jason Williams to Locked On Bearcats today. Jason, just as I teased in that cold open, can you give me, in your opinion, the overall state of the Bearcats football program as we head into the first spring game under Scott Satterfield and the first spring game as members of the Big 12? I think, I think it's in fantastic shape, uh, Alex, and thanks for having me. It's great to join you and the Locked On Network. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Locked On uh, podcasts, and um, I, I really feel like, uh, I, I mean, could it be in any better shape? Obviously, you know, you lost your head coach, but other than that, uh, a lot of times uh, you lose your head coach and things uh, aren't in good shape, uh, but this is the case uh, – where the program is maybe in the best shape it's ever been in. You're looking at, uh, you know, with, with, with Scott Satterfield coming in with his experience as the App State coach at Louisville in the ACC, They're, they've broken ground. And I was just up at UC the other day. I teach an adjunct class there um, in journalism and walked right by the where they're building the new uh, indoor uh, practice facility. Uh, that, that construction is well underway with demolition and clearing the land is well underway where the old bubble is, that's all gone. Uh, the little lacrosse stadium they had there, that's all gone. So you, when you think about the grander uh, state of this program going into the big 12, that's exciting coming off, uh, you know, the seasons that they've just had going to the college football playoff. Uh, what, you know, 2018 winning 11 games, 2019 uh, winning 11 games, 2020 uh, they went 10 games that year, I think, uh, not or nine games because of the shortened season of COVID. Uh, 2021, uh, but they would well, that's right, that was the college football playoff year, 13 and one last year. In a quote, you know, I guess, I guess it was maybe a little bit of a down year. Uh, you still win nine games in your down year. Uh, this this program, I think, is still. Uh, it, you, I think you have to sit here and say, it's it's still on the rise as as it goes into uh, the Power Five conference. I agree with you, and and I even think that you know after a down season last year, there's still a lot of hope and optimism surrounding this program when you think about the players that still remain, and when you think about what they've accomplished. The foundation that Scott Satterfield's walking into at Cincinnati is a lot yeah. better than what Luke Fickle walked into six years ago. So that's no a, doubt. That's a huge plus. And and you covered the Bearcats football program a little bit back when you were the political columnist at the Enquirer. It, it wasn't in great shape when Fickle walked in here. They were coming off a four and eight season. They go four and eight in year one, but now they're coming off of five straight seasons where they won at least nine games. And you can put an asterisk if you want to, Jason, by 2020, because that was a shortened season due to COVID-19. They probably would have won – not probably. They would have won double-digit games that year because they went undefeated in the regular season, and then they backed it up with another undefeated regular season in 2021. Now, obviously, new head coach, there's going to be questions regardless. It it, it can be – 
Jason, it can be like Lincoln Riley being hired by USC. There were questions surrounding them last year. I don't cover the USC program, but I guarantee you there were questions out in Los Angeles with Lincoln Riley. But here in Cincinnati with Satterfield, it, it kind of feels like to me the vibe I'm getting from fans is they're eh about the hire. They yeah. don't love it, but they don't hate it. Sorry for my phone ringing as we record this. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, give me how confident on a scale of 1 to 10 you are in Scott Satterfield and his ability to lead this program. I'd say somewhere between a 7 and an 8. Uh, let's go 7 and a half. Um, I, I, think, I think it was a solid hire. Uh, you know, I've heard a whole mixed bag of, uh, you know, there's been a lot of meh. Uh, about the hire there's been a lot of like you know like, oh, i can't stand this hire i think a lot of that's settled down now obviously as time has gone on um but you know you're now in this wait and see mode and certainly that's that's all you can do um but i think it's a very solid hire um i think there are going to be challenges that bearcats fans really need to be prepared for and you you can never really be prepared for it until you go you, you go do it um but you have to you have to give the guy time like you know, he comes in at a time yeah the program is in great shape but on the flip side you're getting ready to go from an AAC schedule uh, to a big 12 schedule and um, there could be some growing pains with that do I think the Bearcats are still in a position like well they'll, you know like, I don't I don't see any any reason to believe like the bottom's going to fall out and they're going to go you know two and ten or four and eight or something like that but you know I you know, this is a fan base that's used to double-digit victory seasons, uh, you know, in the last five years. Uh, obviously, nine wins last year, all, all three regular season losses by a score. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think you got to lower your expectations a little bit and give a little bit of grace and a little bit of uh, leeway because of the step up in competition. You also have a tough non-conference game this year. And, uh, you know, it's tougher than it was last year, the, you know, the big non-conference game. Well, no, I, it, it's not like they, they went at Arkansas last year. Uh, this yeah. year they go to Pitt. So in that way, it's different. It's it's different. Obviously, you go from four non-conference games down to three in the Big 12. Um, but I overall, like, I, I think I think things are in really good shape. Um, I think um, I, I don't. There's certainly no reason. To, it's, it's just more of like, go see what happens. Uh, be excited about all those years. And I, I, you know, you think about this. I went to UC. And I, and when I was at UC, there were people who, if you weren't apathetic about the football program, there were other people who were like, let's just get rid of it. And, yeah. you know, basketball, Bob Huggins, when I was at UC in the early to mid 90s, was a huge deal. And, Football was a total afterthought. I still remember going to uh, the Memphis game uh, my freshman year, and it was snowing like crazy. And it was you could count the number of I was one of them. You could count the number of students who were in the stands. <laughs> and now the student section is packed. Like, and that's been long, obviously, long changed. Um, but you know, there there should be. There's no fear of going back to those days. Like, or, you know, are there going to maybe be some six and six or seven and five seasons like maybe um but you know this program is i think is in really good shape and yeah i think i think people should be generally excited uh about the new era of the big 12. and i guess what i was trying to say was back then it was when i first started at uc in my freshman year they were independent so to think where the football program has gone since then, the Conference USA, to the uh, Big East, the American Athletic Conference, now to the Big 12, and going to the Big 12 after these last, uh, you know, these last what five seasons, is uh, it's an exciting time I think uh, for Bearcats fans and and just for the university as a whole. And yeah, you lost Luke Fickle, and that's tough. And um, but overall, I. I I think I think there's a, a, a lot of positives here. I think the point you hit on that I really agree with is that a lot of fans don't like the, the situation the Bearcats are in because of where they've been the last five years. But those who understand it, like you do and like I do, 
I, I think they are okay with as long as this team goes what bowl eligibility seven and five, maybe an eight and four. I mean, they've been to 13 bowl games in the last 16 years. So I, I and if you actually 14 in the last 17, so it is long. I, I think as long as they get to a bowl game, as long as they continue that consistent streak, then I think a lot of fans are going to feel really happy about where the program is going. And they might be concerned that they're starting over. I get that. But what I I will also understand is it's not really starting over. I contend, I contend for as great as Luke Fickle was, I contend that they wouldn't have won with him in the Big 12. I don't think Luke Fickle was embracing the modern day nuances of college football. NIL, transfer portal, offensively offensively driven. I don't think Luke Fickle was any of that. I think with Scott Satter, and again, Luke Fickle was a really good head coach. I'm not dismissing anything he accomplished at the University of Cincinnati. I am saying that Scott Satterfield's a little more modern, and the Bearcats kind of have to modernize a little bit going into the Big 12. So that's where I'm excited for what Satterfield can bring. And I want to ask you what your reasonable expectations are for the Big 12. I also want to ask you about the Bearcats men's basketball. Because you wrote in the Inquirer during the season something that kind of differs from how I think and a lot of other fans think about Wes Miller. So we'll get into that after I explain to our audience how this episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you. My fan duel sports book. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bid up to one thousand dollars. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your first bet and get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. Jason Williams of the Cincinnati Inquirer Sports Columnist, my guest today on Williams Wednesday. Alex Frank back with you on Lockdown Bearcats, of course, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Jason, um, this is something you covered in 2016 in your political columnist days at the Inquirer. And the Bearcats were trying to get into the Big 12. They're, the Big 12 was maybe going to expand. They didn't. They ultimately did. Five years later, the Bearcats got invited. They're in the Big 12 officially on July 1st of this year. But give me your reasonable expectations for year one in the Big 12 for the Cincinnati Bearcats football program. I think I think it's uh, reasonable to think 7-5, uh, and 8-4. and four. Um, I, You know, I, I, you know I'm... I'm I've gone down the, the, the schedule and, you know, I look at that schedule and I, I you know, again, new coach, you're going to have, you're going to have some adjust, just even by the nature of a new coach, no matter what league you're in, there's going to be some adjustments there. And, uh, you know, no matter how much talent you have and, you know, I look at that schedule and I think I, I can't, I can't, look at any of those games and, and say, oh, that is an absolute drop dead for sure loss. Now I can, but I can also look at that schedule and say, oh, you know, yeah, they're probably going to lose that game. Uh, they'll probably win that game. So I think overall, uh, yeah, I think what'll be interesting is if, if, if they go to pit in the second game of the year after they beat Eastern Kentucky and they, find a way to win that game. Then they come home and play Miami. And then they got Oklahoma coming here. And if, if somehow you can you can win that game at Pitt and you go three and oh into that Oklahoma game, Oklahoma coming off a you know a pretty lame season for them. I think that could be really interesting for them, uh, you know, gaining momentum early in the season. So you get through that pit game, get three and oh under your belt, kind of get this team with some confidence. Uh, with the new coach, maybe maybe that maybe that gets you to to the eight 
even uh, I, I don't even want to say because like people are going to be like, oh well, you said this team could even win nine and they only won six or whatever. I, you know, I, I honestly don't know, and I and I think that's probably the general uh, thought right now is like we know what the Bearcats we know that they were a dominant team um, in in the league they were just in, and we yeah. knew they could play with the big guys. Well, now they're going to be an entire league of the big guys. And yeah. It, it, is it is it the Big 12? Uh, you know, they don't play Texas this year, um, and they don't play TCU. So, so they caught a they caught a break uh, there with the scheduling. But you know, these are all teams. Even even the you know the the middling and the the, the teams that aren't very good, the, the Iowa States and the Kansas is. Uh, those teams are battle tested because they play, they've been playing yeah. at a higher level consistently in, in, in every week. It's if great that point. makes sense. And so, no, it does. And so that's why I say, like, you got to be careful about trying to make a prediction. I'm, I'm not saying you or anybody, it's sports, you can make a prediction, whatever. I'm saying for myself, like, because this is, there's a, there's a faction of unknown here. Like the Bearcats, we know have been an elite program the last five years. Um, but are they, does that translate? And again, new coach, uh, how, what's that difference there? If that makes sense? Like, is it, is it a small difference? Is it a big gap? Is it, is it a gap at all? And so I think there's, um, there's some element of unknown there, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's exciting. You're going to, you know, this new conference and if you were to say to me when i was in college and jim kelly and i uh, the radio analyst uh, along with dan Hoard uh, on the bearcats uh, radio he and i've talked about this like you know when i was in school in the early 90s and mid 90s if you were to say like that you see football is where it's at today getting ready you know they're broken ground on a hundred million dollar indoor facility and yeah coming off all this this just you know, double digit victories, uh, you know, multiple seasons and went to the college. Well, we didn't have college football playoff back then, but to be there playing with the big boys and now to be in one of those, uh, you know, big time conferences, I, I don't know, like, I think we would all back then laugh at you. Um, but I, everyone, I think any and people are going to, fans are going to do what they do, but I think this is an exciting time uh, for the university, for the football program. And uh, you look at that schedule and you think, okay, are they on even par with West Virginia or is West Virginia, which was what, five and seven last year? And they've been a solid program over the years. And they've had some, certainly some great seasons. And, you know, the UC played them in the big 12 years and those were competitive games. But is West Virginia that much higher than UC is now? Or are they on even turf or is even UC – a step above them. Yeah, I, I'm more inclined to say UC is a slight step above them, and you go down that list, and but that's kind of a mixed bag as you go down the list of the Big 12 teams. Yeah, UC is a little ahead of them, I think. UC is a little below them, I think. You know, UC is on even, and so there's an element of unknown here in this schedule because of that step up in competition on on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. I think you I think you bring up several great points there. First is that this is going to be a much tougher league because you're playing against power five opponents nine out of twelve weeks in the regular season. Now, the other thing that you brought up is there, yeah, there is not a game on the schedule that I, that I say, oh yeah, that's a loss. No, I don't think that. I think what you're gonna see, Jason, and I've said this on this show, is that the defense is going to keep them in every game. It's a question of whether the offense can score enough points to play yeah. with the Oklahomas, your UCFs, and uh, your other offensive juggernauts in the Big 12. The other thing is, too, you got to be careful with Iowa State and Kansas, even though you get them both at home, because you're right. They, they, they've been playing against these teams for years. Cincinnati is not. I mean, the, the, the toughest game Cincinnati would face outside of a tough non-conference game is, what, UCF? Okay, well, I mean, they – did well with UCF. They won three straight from 2019 through 2021 and arguably should have won this past year. So there is, there's going to be a, a much bigger change 
in competition, how the Bearcats adapt to that week in and week out. I mean, you talk about um, uh, you, you you talk about Oklahoma. You open up your Big Twelve schedule with them at home, which is going to be an awesome atmosphere. Jason yeah. Peace wrote a column in, in the Enquirer that that game should be a nip and night game. I don't care if you have to negotiate with the television partners over at ESPN or whatnot, but that should be a nip and night game. And then you go on a short week, Jason, to BYU. I don't know if you've been out to Brigham Young, but that's got to be difficult to go out there on a short week with the altitude, and it may not be all that warm out in Provo, Utah. So just throwing that out there. Well, and I, I think if you were going to say if there is one game, I'm glad you brought that up because given the circumstance of coming off, and especially like if the Bearcats win and beat Oklahoma at home and what could be uh, – I got to think that's – that could be a record crowd at Nippert Stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for that game, and then on a short week, you have to go to BYU and a tough place to play anyway in, in the in the altitude. Um, I, if if there is a game where I'm like, uh, you know, you're close to saying that's probably a loss. I, I look down that schedule of those road games. Uh, talk about road games. Sorry. I, I would, you know, I think that would, that's going to be a tough one for the Bearcats. Yeah, no question. All right. We're going to switch gears to the hardwood. You kind of take a different approach to Wes Miller than I do and several others, several of other listeners of this podcast do. Kind of give me right now how you feel about the program, especially after what they did in the NIT. Now you've got Nolly gone. He obviously, for much, you know, he's going on to the NBA, which is great for him. Davenport's in the transfer portal. We don't know what's going to happen with Micah Adams-Woods. They did get Jameel Reynolds just recently in the transfer portal. Aaron Estrada has the Bearcats. Aaron Estrada's from Hofstra. They, he's in, the Bearcats are in his top four schools. But, like, kind of give me where you are with the program with Wes Miller, how, we, how you view him as a head coach as they head into the toughest conference in college basketball, Jason Williams? I, I think the program is just sort of in uh, – I think it's just kind of uh, – sputtering might be a little too strong of a word. I think it's just kind of middling right now. Um, I, I, you know, I, and I know people will are, you know, differ with me on this, um, but, I, you know, there, will, there are people who think they took a clear step forward this year – I don't. I'm not seeing that. I, did they take maybe a small step forward? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's certainly you can argue that. But I, I, I the way they played in uh, in that in in their last game in the American Athletic Conference uh, tournament against Houston, and just didn't put up a fight and got blown out. I was like, where where is Bearcat basketball? And in, we're at the end of year two of Wes Miller. And, and maybe, maybe my expectations, having covered and, and gone to college in the Huggins years and covered uh, when I was at the Cincinnati Post, uh, the Huggins, couple of Huggins seasons, and then the Mick Cronin era and how, and how tough those teams were, and, and even John Brandon's teams I thought were tough. I feel like, like that, I feel like the Bearcats, they, they lack that kind of punch you in the mouth kind of mentality that we, we were so used to seeing with, with Bearcat basketball, and I'm talking about on the floor. Um, I, and, and I know I know people argue with me and they'll push back on that, and, and certainly that's good. Like, um, and all in saying all that, it is only year two of Wes Miller's time here. He took over a situation that was, I don't think the cover was completely bare, but it, was it a fantastic situation? No, after the whole john brandon thing um i i just felt like when you go down you look at sort of the litmus test teams and the games um you know the marquee victory i think you could say that uc's had was uh in the first month of west miller's tenure in november of, of yeah. the previous season was at 2021 uh against a, a ranked illinois team um I, I, you just like, and again, like, it, and so I, I will say, like, I've been a little torn on this, and I think Bear, I, when I've written about this, I've gotten emails from from readers who have said, "Hey, I agree with you," um, you know, and I, I 
and I think they're being quiet about it because they're like, well, I have friends that are like, they're like, they don't, they think it's the complete opposite. But then I have other friends that are like, I totally agree with you uh, or that they totally agree. Like they're not seeing it right now. And so, I, you know, it may be, maybe, maybe the thought I have looking at UC basketball uh, is coming from a standpoint of knowing that this is one of historically one of the, one of the great basketball programs yeah. in America and knowing having kind of the Bearcat basketball, I sort of grew up with it through college and covering it and then going into, you know, just life. Maybe it's, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just need to give it a little more time in that, yeah. uh, you know, Wes Miller is, in, and I wrote that in my column, like yeah. it is only, in the time I wrote the column was it wasn't even through year two. They were coming off that two lane meltdown, but there were moments yes. where you were seeing you were seeing games like there. It's like these are games they should be winning, and you're like they're melting down down the stretch. Like, and, and that's what I mean by kind of toughness. Like, you know, who who's the where's the mentality of give me the ball, get out of the way. I'm gonna take us and we're gonna win this game. Yeah, and and you know I, I'm so used to that at Bearcat basketball. I, when when I say that, I think of Steve Logan. And Steve Logan was that guy for yeah. that, that area of, of basketball and, you know, of UC in the early 2000s. Because you were what, – what years were you at UC, Jason? I, I went to UC from 93 to 98, and then I covered them for the post from 01 to 04. Okay, so Steve Logan so – yeah. Steve Logan was – I was at the game where Steve Logan outscored the entire Southern Miss uh, – covered that game. And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, was- I just – I just missed the uh, the Kenyan years. Uh, I was in early in my career in Missouri at the time. Yeah, um, so you in terms of covering or watching yeah. it up close, I certainly you, kept tabs. You caught the football. first part of it, and I get it for you because you were there. I mean, when you were at Cincinnati, the Bearcats went to the Elite Eight in '96. They, I mean, you you see, you're the way you know the Bearcats basketball program is. They are one of the elite programs in the country. When I was at Cincinnati, my first year was 2018. I don't yeah. want to talk about how that year ended, but I got used to the Bearcats going to the NCAA tournament. And yeah. I, I do agree with you in what you wrote earlier this season that the Bearcats do need some time, potentially under Wes Miller, to get back to where they were. And I do believe that they can. I mean, Mick Cronin took until year five to get to the NCAA tournament. But then I think about this, Jason, and as someone who loves college basketball, and as I watch UConn win the national championship this year, mm-hmm. and there, this relates to Cincinnati a lot because UConn was a close conference rival for many years. They went from the American back to the Big East. They, you know, I, that move has paid off big time for them. And I think about the Bearcats over the last 30 plus years. We think of them as one of the, you know, great programs in the country. But Jason, UConn's won five national championships since 1999. The Bearcats have only been in the Sweet 16 twice since 1996. How exactly does that make you feel as a Bearcats fan when I tell you that? And oh, by the way, UConn's won the most national championships of any program in the country since 1999, no other period, program, yeah. no other program has three, more than three. Yeah, it just well, it, it, makes you, it makes you think. No, it does. Um, it certainly makes you think, and I and I and I think, I think what what, um, sort of how I was kind of viewing this, and and this is I think is where the perspective, and and I don't like to put it on one game. But I, to me, and, and I've had some conversations with people, and they and they agree with me. And again, like I, I whether you agree or disagree, like that's fine. Like I, you know, I have I have some bad takes sometimes. So yeah, you know, I'm not whatever. Uh, it's it's part of the gig. Uh, but for them to go and really just get in in that Houston game, I go back to that AAC uh, you know, tournament game. And they, you know, they just got, they just weren't even competitive. Yeah. It's like, and I'm kind of like, I just, I'm like, am I, am I, the only, like, there are times when I'm like, am I the only one seeing this? 
that capped off uh, over the last two seasons, 0-6 against Houston. Now, I know Houston's elite, but, you know, and then it, it, you know, they 0-4 against Memphis. I mean, 0-2 what two against Xavier. You lost to NKU. And I'm not trying to dwell on the negative, but and, and besides NKU, but those other three teams are – they're, they're the litmus test. They're they're the – and to go – not even you – know, I, I wouldn't expect them in those two seasons to have a winning record against those teams, but maybe a couple wins. And then to then at the end there have that kind of performance in the tournament game or the conference tournament game, I'm like, what like, – to me, I just thought, man, this thing is – this thing's farther off than I, I think – it probably should have been at the end of year two, but you know I know there's a lot of people out there who disagree with me on that, and 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 I'm not like I'm not sitting here saying like like Wes Miller should like he's that he's the guy or not the guy or like that he should be fired like he definitely deserves time, but when you take in the big picture of it and you think oh well, they're going to what many regarded as the best certainly in the regular season the best. Uh, you know, turn or best conference in America. Uh, yeah, they're into that is much different than football. I think they go into football and you're like, okay, you look at that and you're like, all right, got got to feel pretty good about it. But going in basketball, you're like, oof. And then you lose, um, you know, Davenport. You lose Nolly, and you know, certainly you're going to pick up some talented players. But guess what? It's the Big Twelve. Uh, a lot of those teams have really high recruits as well, and so yeah. I just look at them like, when is this going to turn? And I can't sit here and think like at that definitive point of when, like when and where this thing is going to turn around because there were just moments this year. I'm kind of like, okay, that's the moment you should have really sort of been, okay. You know, it was, it was, you know, Tulane is Tulane a little is, is better than they've been. Yeah. But it's still, it's at Tulane. You got a big lead. You got to finish that game off. You go to yeah, NKU. You're right. Yeah, I mean, like, there were just so many. There were there were too many moments this year. I'm kind of like, and you then you throw in they're going to the Big Twelve, and I'm like, I right now you just I, the state of the program is kind of like uh, middling is the word that comes to mind when it, when I think of UC basketball, but also I think you have to give it time. What I go back to is they have not beaten Memphis or Houston since February 13th of 2020. That's a long time ago. Yeah. That they have beaten one of the top two teams in the AAC over the last three plus years. Houston's going with Cincinnati to the Big 12, of course. So that's something that we'll keep talking about. Jason Williams is on Twitter at J Williams since the sports inquire also heard occasionally on 700. WLW. Jason, I wish we had more time. It's always great talking to you and uh, best wishes to you and your family, man. We'll talk soon. All right. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks, Alex. Uh, you do a great job and keep up the good work. See you. Thank you. Yep. Jason Williams of the Cincinnati Enquirer at Jay Williams. Cincy, thanks to him for joining me today. Thanks to you for listening to us today. Thanks for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen of every day. I'm on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty with two N's and an ATI. Instagram, Alex Frank, not underscore email, Alex3Frank at gmail.com. Wish we had more time. I got to get out of here on this April 12th, 2022. You got a lot of interesting national days today. One of This is interesting. National 412s day. Uh, the number 12, obviously we know the number 12 has a very synonymous place in the sports world. It's also national grilled cheese sandwich day. How about that? And national Colorado day. So a lot of good stuff happening today on this April 12th of 2023. Thanks for Lockdown Bearcats back tomorrow talking about the another angle to the state of the program. And I got a three letter, I got a three letter acronym for that. So looking forward to getting back tomorrow. Also tomorrow afternoon, Russ Heldman joins me live to talk the latest surrounding the Bearcats football program as we head into the spring game plus some basketball news as well. I'm Alex Frank. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, excuse me, every day. Back tomorrow right here on Lockdown Bearcats.